Okay. Well, if, if I take this Nernst Planck equation, this Nernst Planck equation is in terms of ci. And therefore, if I have n species, I have n Nernst Planck equations that describe the distribution of all of the different ions. The net effect of all these ions leads to the net charge density, and that leads to the potential. The potential in turn drives these ions around, so everything is all coupled. This distribution, or this equation, the Nernst Planck equation that I've written, is the easiest one to use if I'm really interested in individual ions. If I want to know what the sodium is doing, or I want to know what the chloride is, is doing. But a lot of times, that's not so much what I care about. A lot of times, what I really care about is the net charge density. Because the net charge density is the thing I integrate to get the convective current, for example. So I'd like to take this Nernst Planck equation and put it into a form that really describes the transport of the net charge density. If I wanted to do that, how might I start? If I'm starting from the Nernst Planck equation and I want to turn this into an equation for the net charge density, what would you do? How do the ionic species Ci relate to the net charge density? If I gave you all the Cis, how would you calculate rho E? We use this when we derive the Poisson-Boltzmann equation. That's right. It's, it's the sum of Ci times the, the valence Zi times the Faraday constant. And the reason why we add the Faraday constant is because Ci is molar. And when I ask for the net charge density, I'm really looking for the total charge. The Faraday constant is the charge per mole. So the net charge density is given by the sum over I of Ci times Zi times F. The sum of all the ionic concentrations times their representative valences times the Faraday constant. And that means if I want to take the Nernst Planck equation and turn it into a net charge density equation, I basically take I basically do this. If I take the sum over i of zi times f times the Nernst Planck equation, I will get a different transport equation, which I can rearrange as a charge density transport equation. So all I've done is I basically said, well, if these two sides of the Nernst Planck equation are equal to each other, if I take the sum over i of zi times f times these two sides, I will still have a valid equation. <coughs> the left-hand side becomes d rho, d, rho, d rho e dt because these terms aren't changing as a function of time. On the right-hand side, I can make some key assumptions. And these assumptions are required to put this equation into a convenient form, although they don't have to be true for us to be able to come up with a numerical solution. If I assume that all of these diffusivities are equal, <coughs> this term just becomes the Laplacian of the local charge density.
And the second component, this is basically a sum over all the species of the convective flux of charge density. So if I take this Ci times Zi times F, that's a local charge density. This Ui is the motion of that ion. And so I'm basically looking at a summed flux term that has the motion of ions times the local charge density. And this, and again, this is going to be a homework problem, can be rearranged to take this form. And this now, this term, is the divergence of the ohmic current. So the Nernst-Planck equation for an individual ion tells us that the local ion concentration is changing based on the divergence of two different types of fluxes, a diffusive flux of those ionic species and a convective flux of those, um, of that, of those ion. Uh, let me start again. The Nernst-Planck equation is telling us that the change in CI as a function of time is, the is given by the divergence of convective and diffusive fluxes. The diffusive flux is given by D grad C the convective flux given by UICI. We can take that and we can sum over all the species to get a transport equation, this rho e transport equation. Again, this is just a sum over the Nernst-Planck equations. And that equation is written here. Now, we can leave that in its form, and it's, and it's technically correct in that form. However, if we want to have a transport equation strictly in terms of bulk properties like the net charge density and the conductivity, we have to make one key assumption, and that assumption is assuming that all of the diffusivities are equal. If we assume that all of the ions are approximately of the same size, approximately of the same valence, then we can rearrange this to get a much simpler expression. And that expression says that we can also think about this system just in terms of the net charge density without paying attention to every single ion. When we do that, we see that the local net charge evolves because of diffusion of the net charge plus a net inflow or outflow of charge that comes from the divergence of the ohmic current, which is sigma times e. Right? So that tells us that if the conductivity were uniform, and I could pull this out, then the only thing that would be, uh, that would contribute to this would be the divergence of the electric field. That's often zero in the bulk. But as soon as things get interesting, as soon as there are changes in the local charge density, changes in the local ion concentrations, this conductivity becomes a function of space. The electric field multiplied times this conductivity has a net divergence. And that divergence of this ohmic current is another contrib uh, contributing factor to this change in the net charge density. And the key link I want you to make between this equation and that equation is that this ohmic current that we might think of strictly in terms of relating the applied voltage to the current is also a manifestation of the convective transport of ions that we look at in an individual basis in this Nernst-Planck equation. So the conductivity we think of as a bulk property that relates voltage to current, but it also really is just a glorified sum of these ion fluxes in this ion transport equation. So that Nernst-Planck equation can be used to, for example, predict the electrical double air distribution. This also can be used equivalently to describe the distribution in electrical double air, both in a dynamic sense and in, in, in an equilibrium sense if we cancel out this equation.